Okay. Um, I wanted to first thank you for the purchase and uh, let you know that um, if you do have any problems aside from this video to show you how to do this, I am here. You can um, you can click on this little chat button down here, and um, I'll be I'll be on the other side of it to help you out should you uh, should you require anything. Um, you gotta forgive my sniffling and coughing. I'm still sick, but that's um, that's a good time to do the video, right? Okay, so um, after you make your purchase, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go to here and you're gonna click on the service downloads, and then you're gonna select your products view details. And in here, we're going to click on the downloads, and this is the download that I'm going to take. It does work for Jigo Shop, uh, depending on how much of the fields you filled in, if if you filled in everything. Um, if it doesn't, again, click on the chat button here. Um, I can help you modify that. Uh, we do modifications for $25. Bucks. Um, we'll actually install it and uh, submit it to Google for you if you want for $25. Um, but the only thing, prerequisite is you need to have that merchant account um, already set up. So let's kind of get into the into the soup of this. So the first thing you do is you click on this download button and then um, it'll put um, this into your download. So here's my download now that I've downloaded it. Um, and now I'm going to go to my WordPress install and I'm going to click on plugins and I'm going to click add new, add new. Forgive my internet, it's probably pretty slow today. Okay, and we're going to click on upload and I'm going to select that download that I've made and I'm going to click install now. Now I already have installed in this but that's what you're going to do and then it's going to go it's going to install it and then it'll say activate so you're going to click on the activate button and then you'll be brought back to this. Now at, right after that if the first thing you're going to do is you're going to click on this editor here and from this drop down we're going to select purple turtle XML feeds. And click select and then we're going to go down here, we're going to click on the purple XMLS slash Google Feeds PHP. And then we're going to go to this page. This, this, will, be, this will be a link inside of your uh, inside of the instructions email. So I'm going to copy that and paste it in here. Now you can see the way this is set up. Um, this, up until like a few days ago, this was a, the list. They, they give you like a big list and you could select right down and it would give you the printout. But they've removed it for some reason I don't know why um, as soon as I find a better version I will include it in the email so chances are if you're watching this later then I've probably already found it and updated that link if not um, I just wanted to point out that um, see how these are all apparel and accessories there's a reason for that this is called a, a top level category and then we have the children and the grandchildren and then the sub grandchildren so selecting a top level category is perfectly acceptable you don't have to drill right down to the very category that, let's say you have makeup and you're selling blush, you know, but you can put it in that parent category of, of you know, accessories or whatever the case may be. You don't have to try and drill all the way down. That is perfectly acceptable. In this case, um, we're using uh, furniture and you can see here, furniture. So, and that's just a top level category. And I mean, and what we're spelling in specifically, um, it doesn't matter. They will categorize that as they get searches, and we're going to do this based on keyword and brand. So, if you haven't set up, and I put this in your email as well, um, if you haven't set it up as a brand category, so you know, I mean, if um, again, we'll use the makeup. I'm pretty sure I can see something over there. Okay, we got uh, Maybelline. I can see it from my girl's stuff over there, um, and uh, Clairol. I think that's what it says. I can't really see. I'm kind of sick and my eyes aren't very good. Anyway, so <coughs> that would be the best way to categorize things when you're first setting up your shop. And that makes it easier for Google to figure out what they're going to show because most of the time when people search for things, they search for the brand. If not, they search for the exact keyword, but we're going to cover them both. And that's the reason why I use this instead of the WooCommerce plugin because the WooCommerce plugin doesn't allow you to kind of, uh, doesn't give you that control. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So. You know, I mean, in, in a lot of cases, you can put, you know, clothing, jewelry, you can put the secondary category. You could just literally type in anything you want here, you know, whatever would be the best category for you. And try and pick the parent. Don't drill right down because we're going to cover everything and everything is going to sit in that one category. So in the makeup example, it would be beauty. You know, I know they got a category beauty. So another category would be um, vehicles another category would be furniture and of course the subcategories of furniture is chairs and dining room tables and couches and all the rest of that stuff but it's still under the category furniture so we use the top level 
and from there, that's where we move on. So, you know, I'm going to, I'm just going to retype furniture here, just assuming that that would be, you know, there's the one, and this would be the other. So, and, and I've, I've pointed it out in here. So if you actually copy this right out of the email, I'm going to com command C, I'm going to go to this page, I'm going to com find command V. And that didn't find anything, but you'll see it here. Maybe I'll just correct the email so that it does that. Do that. And that way when we search, we'll find it. Okay. So like I said, you just got to change these two things to whatever matches your best interest. Now, um, after that, that's pretty much all you got to do. So now we can just administer the plugin. And we do that by clicking on the settings or mousing over the settings and then going to the Purple Feed XMLS. <laughs> now, like I said, this gives you a lot more control. It isn't just a Google Products XML. It's also just a regular Products XML. So in the same sense, um, I'll just use this one for an example. So after we've got it, that one thing done, like the, uh, the editing of the actual category, uh, we just select whatever we want. Now, you can see the top levels will have these little things on it. See how this is a main category? This will be your top level. Now, you can see that in this example, the top levels are keyword rich, living, you know, and the subcategories are brands. <clears throat> it doesn't really matter which way you do it. Um, it's if you're promoting, um, if you're paying for those Google products, I would suggest again doing it as brand. So this one I'm going to take younger and then I'm just going to click that. Now, if you do this in Safari, Safari doesn't work very well with an RSS feed. So what I would do is I would actually right click that and then copy the link. So copy link address. And then you go into your Google feed or your webmaster, whatever, and then click on that. And then copy that. And this is what I paste into the feed. So as you can see, um, it's got the product category, which is the furniture. It's got the type, which is furniture, um, image links. Everything that you've put into the back end um, will now show up in the feed. So the MPN would be your SKU, right? Um, the ID would be the ID of your product in your store, not necessarily, because that has to be an individual identifier, okay? So it can be anything. It's for you. It's not for them. That's for you. Um, and it's for them so that they don't put the two products together. Um, it'll include a description um, and uh, availability. And I've got it so that all of the availabilities are in stock. So it just helps with the feed anyway. So that's it. Just grab your uh, grab your URL and paste it into the uh, into the data feed section of the uh, of the Google Merchant Center data feed, and that's it. That's pretty much all you got. Now, um, the data center feed will allow you to put in nine categories, and uh, when we set these up, generally what I do is I'd grab like a top level, for example, this feature brand. You see how it's got twelve hundred and forty two uh, products in it. So when I click on that, the only problem is I found. That low because there is a lot of products, 1,200 products. And remember, when you set up your feed, you have to pull it daily. So as it's you know you you'd, you'd go into your product center and then you do the feed and then you'd select daily, and then you click on the daily thing and then it'll give you your time of day and all the rest of that. So I usually set it for like 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. If if I've got several categories, I use all nine. Okay, I don't usually do from the top down like this. Um, I'll select individual um, individual brands in this case. So, you know, younger furniture or nouveau living. Um, and I would submit uh, probably five or six of the individual categories so that I have a little more control over the bidding process. And, you know, I, I know what's going in. I know what's going to be covered. Um, I can set up my AdWords. I mean, I don't know how, how experienced you are with AdWords, but in most cases, I like to have real, real good control over that, bid control over brands. You know, I mean, some brands are cheaper than others. So you want to be able to optimize for the brand name specifically. Um, so that's why I set it up like this. Now the the categories XML right here, this just gives you a big list of the categories. So you can submit this pretty much anywhere, anywhere that requires it. But the other thing that I included in this was a secondary XML output, and this is for like plugins or uh, affiliates or any type of place where you're going to need a data output. So this is just a products XML, and it'll include the name, the product ID number, and um, the slug. So in front of the slug, you'd put your, so if I was to grab that and I was to put that in there, the slug would cover the individual product, so when you're 
when you're putting it into some place like, uh, like I said, an affiliate system or something like that, then again, we can modify these. I can add fields to this. Like say, for example, you're using a, you're using a plugin on one site or a widget on one site where, here, I'll give you an example of that. Let me give you an example of that. I'll go. I probably spelled that wrong. I am a little sick right now. So I'll give you an example of that. If I go, uh, what does it mean? You'll see on a subdomain of a main domain, I have a list of the products. See what I mean right here? So I've got the list of the products. Now I'm pulling that from the same type of feed. So that's what that's what that secondary feed is for. It's just in case you want to pull other products and set it somewhere else. And again, like I said, um, the WooCommerce plugin that they made, the $50 one, it, it has an output it does like I said. I need. I like to have control. I'm a control freak, so I like to have full control over everything. Eight output, input, the whole deal. So, um, I can take that and manipulate it in different ways. So, like in this case, I also pulled a price field and the on sale field. So I'll only pull the category that's on sale. You know, so it allows you that flexibility to to select different categories and submit things at different times. You know, the. And a great example of that would be something like up here in Canada, we have Canadian Tire. Well, we have spring sales where you've got your furniture, your outdoor patio sets, your stuff like that. Well, that's the time that you want that feed to be in there and optimize perfectly. Whereas the winter time, you want snow shoveling stuff and snow blowers and, and you know, winter tires and things like that. And that would be your optimized category. And you can kind of drop the other ones off because nobody's buying patio furniture in January. Not here anyway. So you get the idea of, of what the usefulness of having those selective categories are. And because you can use nine at a time, um, you can use kind of five as solid, and then you can kind of bring in and out the other ones. As you see, uh, ones that are converting well, ones that aren't converting so well, uh, ones that you're getting lots of click-through, ones you're not getting lots of click-through, things, you know, so it gives you that, that flexibility there. So like I said, um, if you have any questions, you just go down here and you click on this little, uh, this little icon right here, and it'll take you to me, and I will help you in any way I can. Okay, I hope that helps. Um, I think I've covered this all, so... So pull the categories from the field, navigate down, blah, blah, yeah, got that on top, so category, drill down, yeah, so category, remove the random, okay. So what that does, if you notice, and another reason why we did the random is because, I'll just select this again, and I'm going to click on this, stand by one second, let this page load, okay, at the end, you're going to see this random, it's a random hash, you can delete that, and then copy that URL and paste it in. Um, I would suggest doing it in Chrome because it allows you to see the feed in raw format. Whereas, like I said, uh, I don't know if Internet Explorer is going to do it. Um, I know that Safari will give you something. Here, it's ugly as hell. Hang on one second. If I was to paste that into Safari, see, no RSS feeder. It tries to replace this with feed. It's, it doesn't turn out right. I mean, it, you can use this. All you got to do is take that out, put HTTP colon back in it. And then I can copy that. And if I was to paste that back into Chrome, I would, in essence, I would, in essence, get the same thing. So, um, even if you, even if it comes out looking like this and you don't know what to do, um, let me just back that up a little bit, paste that in. You'll see here it says feed right here. So, HTTP colon. Okay, now that's a good feed. Double check everything that I got. Everything else. Oops. Where am I going here? Uh, feed your can be a data feed. Oh yeah, and the webmaster tools. Okay, so. The other thing that I wanted to do was I also wanted to submit the products to Webmaster Tools so that each individual product will get crawled and optimized individually. Uh, that's another thing is ranking organically for a product specifically. Um, in this case for these guys, I want to make sure that this Franny Ottoman thing um, is fully optimized and submitted into Webmaster Tools. So in the case of Webmaster Tools, though, we don't have to go down to the bottom category or, or like the brand category. I can use a featured brand category. So in the same sense, when I pulled up that 1,242 list, I can submit that to Webmaster Tools, and then they will have a proper XML output. And the same goes for this. So you can use these in Webmaster Tools. Um, I, the Bing will work with this one. So if you have the Bing uh, Webmaster Tools uh, enabled and you're, you're doing your you doing your sitemap submission, I'd use this one because this one would direct it with the slug directly to the product. So, and of course you can use your categories XML all the rest of those. So that's the reason, again, another reason. There's lots of reasons why we built the plugin like this. So um, although it may be a little, uh, you know, uh, apprehensive about uh, touching anything, don't worry about that. Like I said, 
um, you can always click on this bad boy right here and uh, I'm on the other side of it so uh, thank you for the purchase and I hope it does you does you well